mistakes were made. When you get a new pattern out, what is my advice that I always give you every single time? Make a muslin. Oh my good! I need to listen to my own advice. I really do need to listen to my own advice. I know better. I like it. Really? The sleeves are a bit mad. They're more than a bit mad. They have giant holes in them. Not the kind of holes you want. I'm not a huge fan of the opening. I wanted to try it. Really? I'm glad that I did. Really? I will probably always wear it with a jumper like this underneath of it. You won't though. You'll try it on, realise that you don't like it, put it back in the cupboard. So, let's fix it. I made this back in January and I really do love the overall silhouette of the dress. I love the silhouette of the sleeves when I'm standing still. But when I move, those sleeves have giant gaping holes in them and I either have to wear a jumper or a t-shirt underneath of them or have bare arms. To me, it's an autumn winter dress and bare arms means chilly. So no, <laughs> definitely not. I'm going to be very much like Edna Mode going forward. She says, no capes, darling. No capes. I'm going to be saying, no sleeves in holes. No. <laughs> no holes in sleeves. I mean, except for the one where you put your arm in and then when you, when you put your hand out, you know, you need those holes, but no other holes in sleeves. First things first, we need to trace the sleeves or retrace the sleeves. Okay, so I have my sleeve back and my sleeve front. So the circle in between the two pleats at the top is the center. If we align the tops, you see that the pleats actually meet up as well. And then at the bottom, which is of course just out of shot there is a little circle there and that is where the bottom of the sleeves match up so i am going to take some tape just tape these two areas down so that this sleeve will behave itself whilst i'm tracing it the other thing that needed attention was the cuff it was around about an inch too wide at the bottom so i used the slash and overlap method it's usually slash and spread but slash and overlap method to take that inch out of the bottom of the cuff and leave the top of the cuff at the original size so now that we've established that i really ought to listen to my own advice and make a muslin first or at the very least use less precious fabric when making something up for the first time let's try and repair the problem i have cut out my what is going to be full sleeve lining out of the navy crinkle viscose i fully bagged out this sleeve and i have trimmed this to within an inch of its life with pinking shears so that it sat nicely around the curves i don't want to unpick that and try and put in the sleeve lining so i'm going to hand stitch that one into place the other thing that i have done is put in a continuous lap. So what I'm gonna do is unpick the hand stitching that secures the cuff. I'm also going to unpick the stitching that secures the continuous lap. Then I'm gonna sew on the stitching lines on the sleeve linings for the continuous lap. Sew the underarm seams, put the gathering stitches in, and then try and smoosh everything together as neatly as possible. Wish me luck. Here you can see the reinforcing stitches for the continuous lap. I put in the pleats at the top of the sleeve. I've also run a line of stitching 5 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge at the top of the sleeve. I'm going to use this as a pressing and sewing guide later. When I'm working with a fabric that doesn't have an obvious right and wrong side, I like to put a pin in to designate that this is the right side, for example. That way I won't sew two of the exactly the same sleeve. I will get the mirror images that I need. Because this is going to be a lining, I am sewing this with a regular seam, 5 eighths of an inch with the right side together then I'm going to press it open as you can see here you'll also notice that I've pressed the 5 eighths of an inch stitching line that I did around the top of the sleeve I've pressed that under and that's to give me an accurate stitching line when I sew the sleeve lining into the sleeve later now I can cut into the continuous lap triangle that I have reinforced earlier then it's time to add the gathering stitches that will corral down the fullness of the sleeve into the cuff unpicking time I'm unpicking the slip stitching that's securing the cuff into place on the inside of the sleeve. I'm also unpicking the hand stitching and machine stitching that I used to secure the continuous lap into place. Once everything was unpicked, I could slip on the sleeve lining, making sure that the wrong sides were together. Then I placed the continuous lap reinforced triangle over the continuous lap of the sleeve pinned the continuous lap itself into place covering all the raw edges and machine stitched it down three times because I kept getting it wrong. 
With the continuous lap finally complete, I could pull on the gathering stitches and gather down the volume of the sleeve into the cuff. Once it was all evenly distributed, I slip stitched it into place. The final step was to ensure everything was straight and pin in the arm side of the lining to the dress and slip stitch that into place, making sure that nothing got twisted. Then I had to repeat for the other side. I can't believe how much of a difference that little change to the sleeve makes. I think it looks awesome and I'm so glad that I took the time to rectify this silly, silly mistake. Always make a muslin, people. This is so much better. So, so much better. I actually really like this different or solid pop of colour in the middle of the sleeve now that they're all one piece and that they have been stitched together. Now, I got cocky. I am really, really lucky that Vogue, McCoy's and Butterick patterns, their block that they draw from, usually fits me pretty well. The only alteration I have to make is to add an inch of length, at least, to most of the bodices. Other than that, they have all fit me fairly well straight out of the packet. There's been a few times that I've had to make alterations on the fly, but majority of the times, trace it out, add the inch of length, make it up, Bob's your uncle, everything works. So yeah, I got totally cocky with this. I really did. The lesson I've learned is when I'm trying a new style, the very least I need to do is use wearable muslin fodder, not super precious to me, irreplaceable fabric. This was a gift from the very lovely Nancy for one of my Christmas presents. I hoarded it for a long, long time, not knowing what to do with it. When I finally worked out that I wanted to make this dress with it, I thought it was going to look beautiful. And it does, but just no sleeve holes. No, no extraneous sleeve holes. I know better than this, and it could have been a complete disaster. Lady McElroy are no longer producing this print. They will, on occasion, reprint things if enough people are asking for it, but I couldn't replace this fabric. And I used the scraps that I had left to make my By Hand London Anna top. Even if I hadn't have cut out that top, there wouldn't have been enough fabric to repair or refashion these sleeves in the way that I've done. Now, a lot of people did say to me that I should be making just a patch to sew in to this opening. And you know what? That's a really, really good idea if I could have removed the sleeve completely and laid it out flat. But that was an impossibility because of the way that I had bagged out the lining and as I mentioned in the sewing process, I have trimmed this to within an inch of its life with pinking shears. So removing the sleeves was just not an option. I don't think that if I had tried to put a patch in in 3D that it would have gone in as nicely and sit as well as this version does because I had the option that once everything had been sewn into place I could hang this dress up put my hand inside of the sleeve and pin everything into place with it being round I just I wouldn't have been able to do that with a flat patch of fabric although as I say I do kind of like this look so I'm not ruling out doing this again. The sewing process of this was totally fine. It went exactly how I imagined it would. And the first time I did it, I didn't film. I just did it to check the theory and everything worked out fine. The second time I did it, which I actually did film so that I could do a voiceover and show you what I was thinking, I had to unpick and re-sew two separate pieces three times. Why? <laughs> why? Why, 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 why? But you know what? At the end of the day, this dress has now been refashioned and will get worn so, so, so much more. It's a great layering piece, as I showed you in my navy lookbook. And I love these sleeves so much, I've actually already used them on another dress and I will be making more of this one because it's awesome. It's totally me. Fit and flare, epic sleeves cinched at the waist. Yeah, what's not to love? It might have taken me 11 months to get to the decision to refashion these sleeves, but I'm so pleased that I have, and it, this dress will now definitely get worn. And if you'd like to see some of the ways that I've styled it, check out this video here.